Y'all could have been anywhere else on this internet, this ethernet, this, man, this irresponsible place where rumors and misinformation dwell. Yeah, nah, this is definitely a, you know, a learning, growing moment for me. Um, I definitely just had to come to the realization, um, just recently that basically pretty much, I don't know, man, I just feel like, you, you know, becoming comfortable in the situation, obviously, I feel like I'm at a point now where I need to take things to the next level, you know, obviously the EBCG podcast, the brand, um, you know, I'm making strides in that area, but I also have to kind of balance things out between, you know, the podcast and then real life, right? And there's that constant kind of, you know, uh, I don't want to say struggle because I enjoy doing the podcast, right? This is something that, I mean, I, I truly just have a passion for. I do feel like I don't know, man. It's just something about sitting in front. What's like, you know, when the microphone turn on, man. I don't know, man. I just feel like basically like LeBron when he steps on the court, right? Like this is basically just my domain. This is where I'm comfortable. I've always been in this arena and I've always felt comfortable here. Um, but with that being said, obviously, you know, and you know, I spoke about this on a previous episode where I basically uh alluded to you know, basically clocking out of your nine to five to clock into your passion, right? And I don't know, man, I just feel like I'm at a point now where that's just becoming more and more glaringly obvious as far as I'm just at a point now where I just feel like I can't ignore that passion anymore or just that gut instinct or feeling anymore. You you understand? And obviously, with all of the uncertainty that's taking place in the world today, we have so many different things going on. It's just a lot of uncertainty, man. A lot of, a lot of things that are going to, you know, basically leave you feeling uneasy if you have a conscience and a pulse, assuming that you do, right? I'm just saying it's kind of hard to kind of ignore these things. And I just feel like I'm at a point where me personally, you can't really pay me enough to be uncomfortable in a situation. Um, and this is something that, you know, I kind of had to really, I mean, I've always known this. I've always kind of been that individual, right? I bounced around a lot, you know, um, between different jobs, different schools, different, you know, uh, living situations. Like I've, I've moved around a lot throughout my yeah, yeah, nah, definitely, definitely. I just feel like, you know, I mean, if it makes dollars, it, it still has to make sense. And what I mean by that is, you know, once again, I just feel like you can't pay me enough to put myself in a certain situation. Um, If the individuals around me in that environment, if we don't have an understanding of who we are as, you know, individuals in the situation and basically what roles we are playing and communication is kind of just like, I don't need to come to work to, uh, you know, exasperate, you know what I'm saying, any of the confusion that I probably already have, you know, you kind of want to just be able to come to work, you know, kind of have things set up a certain way and, you know, basically you know, collaborate. Yeah, obviously, it's a team effort when we're dealing with a nine to five situation, because obviously, you got other people in the same situation as you basically trying to get their check. But I don't know, man, I just feel like priorities kind of became, you know, and I feel like I'm being vague. I feel like I could say what I'm basically speaking on. I'm basically speaking on, I literally just walked out of a new opportunity that I basically uh, it was actually a decent opportunity, man. And I'm not going to hold you, man. This is definitely a growing moment for Will Maddie TV. Air horn for me. Hold on. Turn this air horn up, though. And turn my energy up. This is definitely a growing moment, you know. 
Yeah, once again, like I said, if it don't make sense, then it, it really just can't make dollars at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And I was just at a point, you know, where it just wasn't making sense. It just wasn't making sense, you know. Um, and realistically, this was kind of like a thing where it was just kind of convenient, right? Um, the timing that the opportunity came about kind of just happened to be right at the perfect time where, you know, that made sense, right? But initially, when I went into the situation, you know, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Ultimately, what I found was, you know, something that I, I actually started to really, truly develop a passion for, a real passion for. Like, I mean, basically, as far as my approach, and I just feel like, you know, my level of, you know, um, work wasn't being matched with certain people around me or whatever the case may be. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's something that you're just going to run into in different situations. And ultimately, like I said, you can't pay me enough to be in an environment where it just doesn't make sense, you know. Um, so I walked, you know what I'm saying? I walked. I definitely walked away from money, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to me for not making a money a priority. Like I said, I don't just talk the talk. I actually will walk the walk and I had to walk away from a bag facts just were just now I just came back from the goddamn job Sunday you feel me it was in there asking me like they basically didn't understand what I was really trying to say you know they looking at me like fam and you know at the end of the day realistically fam obviously I'm not really I know for a fact other opportunities will present themselves other opportunities already have you know and let's be clear you know I'm not um Listen, man, we going into, y'all already know how I feel about, you know, approaching 2024 and, you know, this is the fourth quarter and Mamba year coming up. And like I said before, it is definitely time to make history, you know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I need to just make it make sense at the same time. So I say all that to say this, I encourage everybody and anybody who is within the sound of this audio recording, you know. They just basically choose yourself, you know. Um, I feel like at the end, you know, you really just can't really go wrong when you basically make a decision that you know that you feel is basically the right decision for yourself. And I'm truly, truly at a point now where I can say I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, one chapter closes so another one can open, you know. Um, sometimes you truly, truly got to just, you know, basically follow your heart and go with your gut, you know. Not knowing what's what. Um, something something else that I wanted to definitely acknowledge was, you know, the the recent, you know, unfortunate uh death of Matthew Perry, who obviously, you know, we all kind of knew from Friends, which was a very, very popular show. To this day, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I just learned that the show is actually still in syndication, right? Which just basically speaks to, you know, the impact and ultimately the legacy, you know, that that show is going to leave. But I, I feel like basically what Martin was to us, and by us, I mean Black families in the households and shit. Like what Martin did for us and shit, the Fresh Prince, Family Matters, all of those classic, those black shows that just made us feel. That was kind of like, you know, uh, what Friends was for, you know, the people who could relate to that. And I mean, I wasn't really necessarily the biggest, you know, viewer of the show. And obviously that's not really even significant at this point. I really just wanted to, you know, really salute and pay homage to, you know, uh, Matthew Perry, because obviously... <laughs> He left the he left the you know a huge impact in film and television you know obviously you got so many people who you know kind of I actually didn't even really understand what you know his actual message was as far as you know obviously he played a role on the show and although I wasn't so familiar with the show um I might have watched like a couple episodes or whatever the case may be I feel like you couldn't it was impossible to not see at least one episode of Friends right. What I'm saying is I didn't really, like, follow up with the 
the next episode. So I kind of like, you know, I'm not really sure. I kind of just basically fell off of the, the storyline is what I'm saying, right? I didn't follow the storyline, so I don't really understand it. It doesn't really hit me the same, but I do understand the message that he had outside of the character that he played on the show, which was basically, you know, he was a huge advocate for substance abuse and alcohol abuse and, and these different type of things. Wasn't really even aware of that. Um, Obviously, we don't really, I don't, you know, as of right now, I'm not sure if toxicology reports have been released. Um, I'm not, once again, I'm not necessarily interested in any of that. Um, I just really wanted to just basically salute Matthew Perry for, you know, his contributions. Um, yeah, the fu- the funeral took place over the, over the weekend. Um, it's kind of a private, you know, setting. It took place in Los Angeles, I believe. And yeah, man, that, w- that was pretty much all I wanted to say about that. So salute to Matthew Perry. And as I'm saluting Matthew Perry, I also want to take this time to salute another individual who I feel like is worthy of a huge salute. And that individual that I'm speaking about is Missy Elliott, who just recently has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Come on, man. Missy making history. Like I said, 2024 Mamba year. It's time to make history. And Missy Elliott is off to a great start going into Mamba year because Missy Elliott becomes the first female artist, hip hop artist, that is, to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Drop a bomb for Missy. Missy misdemeanor. Ain't nobody cleaner. Got a little leaner. My flow still meaner. Come on, man. Mr. Mina Elliott, man. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, obviously, I can't speak highly enough of Missy. That that That's like, I can literally sit and do a whole episode on just basically how I feel about what Missy has done and her impact and her, you know, her legacy. You know, we just spoke about Matthew Perry. Um... God bless the dead, you know, and his impact and the show, friends and the impact that that show had. Obviously, Missy Elliott, you know, when we speak about impact and, you know, um, legacy. I feel like her legacy and her, her, her impact will be cemented for, you know, decades to come. Obviously, not only for her being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and being the first female to do so. Right? Drop another goddamn bomb. Drop another goddamn bomb for Missy being the first. This is actually crazy. The first female hip hop artist. So you trying to tell me Lauren Hill didn't even get this? She don't even got this trophy on her mantle, right? But obviously, I mean, realistically, Missy Elliott, she's been putting in work, a lot of work for a lot of years, right? And we. We t- we definitely understand what her impact and her significance was, you know, not only in hip hop, not only in hip hop, but in R and B as well. We're talking about a true artist, a true MC, a true writer, a true pen. You know what I'm saying? Missy Elliott checked off every single box, you know, and obviously, I don't I don't feel like there's another individual who's more deserving of that stat um than missy elliott man so once again salute to missy stand up tim i see you you know what i'm saying you already know what it is i'm not really sure what's going on with the versus situation right now timberland in the gym i see this nigga posting shirtless pics and shit like i think versus is a thing of the past at this point right we didn't get a missy versus did we we didn't it's cool though we got rock and roll hall of fame you know what i'm saying and i feel like uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Salute to Missy for that. Um, yeah. As far as politically, I don't really like to, you know, what I'm saying, do too much politics. You know, what I'm saying on these episodes, I feel like we probably gonna be two hours in on this. You know, what I'm saying, I got a lot to kind of dissect this week. 
But what I can say is this, as of right now, Donald Trump is definitely leading Biden. Trump leading Biden in swing states. I'm not really sure what the significance in that report is right now. Um, as Israeli forces continue, you know, to basically determine if, what are they going to enter Gaza City? And I don't want to listen. Like I said, we already kind of know what's going on. Anthony, I'm just kind of going down the. Yeah, Donald Trump expected to testify in New York City. Um, That's actually taking place right now. So, yeah, it's a bunch of, you know, listen, man, politics and politics. The same old same. Obama weighs in on complexity of Israel Hamas war. I'm actually curious to hear what Obama has to say about this. It's actually crazy that he's still. Yeah, man. So let's let's get into some podcasts, shall we? Let me let me paint the picture for y'all real quick. It is literally Sunday morning. 10 22 a.m it is 22 minutes after 10 a.m on a sunday morning i'm not even gonna hold you like i didn't even really give y'all all of the you know i like to drop my episodes and then i kind of like to come with the snippets behind it i feel like you know when an artist drop an album then it's kind of like you want to kind of push that album you want to kind of you want to go on a promo run or whatever the case may be you probably want to go on tour just to give the album its full shelf life, right? There's no telling what's going to happen tomorrow, fam. I might not want to pod all the time is what I'm saying, right? And realistically, fam, as I stare at this first topic that I'm about to get into, obviously, you know, we kind of we kind of been, you know, following um, everything that's been kind of going on around the world the war in the middle east is obviously still you know very very much still happening um you know obviously we have different protests that are basically taking place all over the world um you have different groups who are basically coming out um to basically pledge for a ceasefire right and I do see that that is a thing. I, I I believe that they have an artist for ceasefire as well, where you have different artists who are basically signing. I'm not sure if it's a petition or, you know, with, however that goes. I mean, listen, man, people are basically just trying to use their voice and use their platforms to try to kind of, you know, um, push a push a message out there that's kind of, you know, countering what we're seeing ultimately, right? Now, it's only so much talking that we can do when it comes to, you know, basically what's happening in real time. And I'm pretty sure that as I'm, you know, basically um, I'm saying everything that I'm saying right now on this podcast, on this episode in real time, as I'm saying these words, there are families who are basically stranded. You have millions, you know, I kind of like, like, low-key, I'm not even going to hold you. I I haven't really been tuned in as far as physically watching any of the, you know. But I do understand that, you know, what the significance of what's going on is. And I do feel like, yeah, there needs to be a ceasefire at this point. How they're going to actually go about doing that, I'm not sure. But I am with, you know, the people who are basically, you know, trying to just basically speak up on the issue. Me personally... On and off of a microphone, this is something that, you know, I'm pretty much going to, I'm pretty much going to have the same stance on, you know, I'm not going to budge there. Um, This is something that I do feel like I had to sleep on this episode because I just feel like, like I said, man, coming off of my last two, I get y'all two, listen, them last ones with some of my longer recorded episodes, not to mention, I feel like, you know, we need a break right now. We don't say we just, we just all need a break right now. We don't really need to come and, you know what I'm saying, basically state the obvious, but I do got to, we got to get to some shit though. I'm not going to hold you. Uh, A lot has occurred. Some of this does feel like old news at this point. I feel like I'm harboring and harping on, you know, what's going on a little bit too much. I do want to say um, peace, love, prayers, and prosperity, you know, to everybody all over the world, you know. Men, women, innocent, young children who are obviously, unfortunately, casualties of a vicious war, you know, 
There does need to be a ceasefire. There has to be some kind of, we have to come to a table at some point, right? And I don't know who these individuals, I don't really even like to say any names. Obviously, we know who the prime minister is. We see his name, you know, it's kind of hard to, they're printing this stuff daily, right? Daily news, right? Daily blues. Hold on, that might be, I don't even have a title for my, um, yeah, so as if what is going on overseas in the Middle East is not enough, you know, you know what I'm saying? As if we don't have enough things to kind of look at to say, damn, you know, I just feel like, you know, the mass shooting that took place in Maine, um, you know, this took place, I feel like it's been over a week now, two weeks. You know, like I said, I kind of had to take a step back because, you know what I'm saying, realistically, as a podcaster, yes, obviously. I just feel like, listen, man, the mass shooting in Maine, um, 18 deceased, you know, uh, suspect, you know, former military service member, and this was actually interesting just for the simple fact that so this man, Robert Card, right? Um, who 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 is now also deceased, you know, uh due to a self inflicted gunshot wound when he was found. He he was actually a former military service member and what made this situation just that much more, you know, Basically, unexplained. You can't. How do you? You can't make this stuff up, man. This is like this is all shit that's literally out of you know the scripts of movies and shit, fam. These are all. So you trying to tell me that this man was a crisis management slash gun safety instructor? So in other words, he's the guy, right? Understand what we're dealing with here. When the people who are basically trained, this man was trained to basically uh prevent the very situation that he caused, you know. Listen, at the end of the day, obviously mental health is a real a real thing. Um, I need some water. And I feel like that's a reoccurring theme when we take a look at, you know, a lot of these different situations that end up occurring, you know. This man, um, you know, there was also what was also noteworthy about this this whole incident was the fact that there was you know um reasons to believe that you know this individual was capable of you know basically doing something like this just for the simple fact that there was actually a wellness check conducted you know back in May and I'm not sure who the individual was that called in for the wellness check. I'm not sure if it was a friend or a neighbor or somebody who was just adjacent to Robert Card who was able to kind of see that obviously I right, something's a little off right now. You know, they look like he all the way there. And obviously we know what he's capable of considering the fact that he has military background, right? And and possibly military weaponry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um you you know that that combination right there obviously we we see the story we see these individuals often you know a lot of people on the street you know what i'm saying new york city a lot of homeless people you know and a lot of those individuals that you see on the street that you know we kind of all just deem and you know we brush them off as just these crazy homeless people but a lot of these people actually served in the military right so i say all that to say this this is not something that's too far fetched and too far away from, you know, this hits close to home. This hits close to home just for the simple fact that, like I said, you know, mental health is something that we kind of all have to really deal with and we kind of all have to take heed to it. Just because you feel like your mental health may be um, in control or, you know, you might feel like, I don't know, you, you might be going to therapy. You might feel like you have your mental health in order. That doesn't necessarily mean that the person next to you on the train or on the bus or next door or you, you see where I'm going with this? And obviously, 
you know, prayers to all of those individuals, um, obviously, um, mass shooting in Maine. Um, from what I understand, at least 18 individuals deceased. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we just want to say prayers and condolences to those families, obviously. Um, and, you know, it, it really just it really just goes to show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we as we speak on mental health and basically just how we have to kind of consider those around us just for the simple fact that we don't really know what the next person is really dealing with at the end of the day. That brings us right into our next story, which, listen, like I said, we're going to get the heavy shit out the way, because like I said, we not it's Sunday. I'm not even really sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, we we gonna get to some Victor Wembanyama. Trust me, we got some NBA talk to get to. That's a whole fact. Yeah, I see. I got Victor Wembanyama as my cover. Low key, we might have to do a back to back cover on him for the first time ever. I've never done a back to back cover athlete on the EBCG, but just know I'm I'm I don't know, man. I just don't see how. Yeah, nah, it's a couple of candidates for this episode. Yeah, yeah, like I said, man, I, I had this pod in the tuck for like a week. So realistically, like this story right here, the mass shooting in the main, this is low-key outdated. We kind of, this kind of, you know, it is what it is. Man, mental health, man. Yeah, 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 considering others around you and then also basically having to think for others around you. And that's something that I kind of had to, you know, I feel like we all have been in situations where we could basically relate to that. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes things do go too far. And that was, you know, there was definitely another story, you know, um, a double homicide in East Flatbush, you know, uh, a neighbor dispute turned deadly, you know, when a 47 year old man Jason Pass uh, basically approached his upstairs next door neighbors. I'm not even really sure how you say that. When they upstairs, they're not my next door neighbors, are they? They're just the upstairs people that are just banging on the... So basically, as far as Jason Pass was concerned, so this is the thing, right? A lot to unpack here. A lot to unpack here. And obviously, you know, once again... um. Vladimir Matherin um, and uh, Chinway Mood, you know, obviously we want to just say, you know, rest in peace to those two men, you know, father and a stepson who unfortunately, you know, was gunned down. Obviously, the video was released. Um, I personally, you know, I watched the video myself, you know, just for the simple fact that I just feel like, you know, it's important for, you know, to kind of see, we have, we kind of have to learn from each other's mistakes at this point, right? And I just feel like at some point, you know what I'm saying? Um, in order for me to kind of see how to navigate through this matrix, right? And basically considering the fact that we do have to think for other people, considering the fact that we have to kind of navigate through this matrix and you know we kind of have to brush shoulders with these these same individuals i might have walked past jason pass like me we might have brushed shoulders at some point this man was a train uh conductor on the train this took place in the neighborhood that i actually lived in at some point right so my point is this i might have met all parties involved at some point or not met but i, I feel like i definitely seen you know i digress I digress. Obviously, it's a small world. You know, this took place in an area that's, you know, not too far. This obviously hits close to home. And this is obviously a situation that I feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we've all been in a situation where we kind of had just a neighbor that kind of was basically like, fam, I'm going to have to just go over there and, and drag this motherfucker out the house at this point. Yeah, we know what neighbor disputes are and we kind of know. Obviously, there's levels to a dispute and there's levels to the way you handle a dispute. Now, me personally, I'm certainly no stranger to a good neighbor dispute. Um, personally, I feel like I've been in this exact situation um, before. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
Now, I didn't go about it the way that this man did. And obviously, we're not trying to, you know, we just want to, we, off top, off top, let me just say this before I say anything else. Obviously, everything that took place and what we've seen in that video was was horrific. You know, it was wrong. It shouldn't have happened. It didn't have to happen that way. And, you know, we, we you know. It's truly unfortunate that, you know, that's kind of how things had to end. But once again, like I said, getting back to my point about mental health, I just feel like, I just feel like, you know, you have to take people's mental health into consideration, man. And I feel like, you know, they, and then also you have a situation sometimes with both parties involved mentally are not just, you know what I'm saying? What if you run into that type of situation where, yeah, there's mental health on both sides, basically, right? So we don't really know. There's no way to really kind of even, how do you even really, how, how can this have been avoided from my perspective and my standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't really know what this man, you know, um, Jason Pass. I'm not sure. Was he former military? I believe he was a uh, corrections officer, right? And obviously, you know, he's he's used he's utilized a weapon at some point before. You know, if you watch the video, I mean, he was very very uh, calculated with his assault. You know, um, like I said, we don't really know what the ins and outs of you know the specific details of what the dispute what actually was taking place obviously it was a noise dispute and like i said obviously yeah 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 i feel like at some point in time we've all been in that situation where we felt like yo these motherfuckers is making too much noise but like i said a conversation and then this was also going on for like it was ongoing so what was it about four years yeah so like i said man i we don't really know i can't speak on what was taking place there? I wasn't there. You understand what I'm saying? All I can say is, um, I definitely do feel like the situation wasn't handled the right way on both sides here. On both sides. So, uh, I mean, unfortunately, you know, Vladimir Chinway, or pardon me, Vladimir Matherin, right? Chinway Mood is the stepson who obviously was, you know, just a casualty of war. Um, in this situation, you know, he had pretty much nothing to do with it. He kind of just came outside because he seen his parents outside in the hallway. And, you know, obviously you want to come out to make sure that everything is, your parents are okay. But at the same time, clearly he wasn't anticipating um, for what happened to have happened. You know, this man kind of came up to you. I mean, and obviously this is the whole thing, man. You come upstairs with a gun with a beam on it, and it's just like, fam, like, I'm not really sure why you felt the need to kind of, you came to a home where a family was at, you know what I'm saying, with a gun with a beam on it, fam? I mean, I could I could have respected it more if you would have just kind of, like, there was another way to go about that if you felt like that was completely where you was at with it. Like, you was ready to, you come up there, and clearly, if you watch the video, he kind of, you know, he was... He didn't have no issue with doing what he did, man. He came up there with the intentions to kill, and that's exactly what he did. He shot the man. You know, this lady was trying to pull the man, and that, that's a whole nother conversation within itself. Like, why was the lady even in the hallway? And I'm not even sure, you know, obviously, you know, you want to protect your family, and if somebody comes and kicks on your door, I mean, I understand you coming outside to kind of see what was going on or whatever the case may be. But I watched the video, like I said, and I just don't feel like, I don't know, man. I just don't feel like the man, he didn't go about the situation the right way. He came out with a pair of scissors at some point. And it's just like, fam, if you're going to come out with a pair of scissors in your hand, you, you might want to, I'm not really sure, you know what I'm saying, what he thought was going to be the end result there right? Especially considering the fact that that man came up there and stood there the way he did. Me personally, I read body language and I understand and I've kind of been in enough situations and scenarios to where I would have been able to pinpoint exactly what was happening there. Like, oh, all right, he, okay, he got it on, cool. Y'all stay in here. 
Nobody should have been in that hallway at all. And if anybody was going to come out there, it should have only been, the you know, the individual who, you know, uh, came out with the pair of scissors. Obviously, he came out with the scissors. But you know what, man? This is the thing, right? I still don't feel like that should have happened, obviously. You know, you're going to have some people on the other side of the fence basically claiming self-defense, saying, yeah, yeah, no, I felt like it was justified. And I, I've even had conversations personally with dudes you know what I'm saying? Speaking on this situation, who literally straight up was like, nah, fam, I would have did the exact same thing. I would have killed, I would have shot him too if I had it on me. Because at the end of the day, once again, you can't really, um the same way we have to kind of assume that people are dealing with different things when it comes to mental health. You know, obviously the same thing could be said when it comes to basically protecting oneself. If you feel like you're in a situation where somebody may be harmful to you, yeah, maybe you're not really sure. You don't have enough time to kind of put two and two together. And now your mental health is kind of, you struggling with your own mental health, basically, right? So you might make a decision based off an impulse reaction. But I mean, once again, I don't feel like that was what happened here, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just felt like it was clear at that, you know, um, that the man was basically just kind of trying to defend, you know, home turf. You know, he came out with the scissors. That was a statement that he chose to make. Once again, I don't personally feel like he made the right choice by doing that. I personally feel like fan. And once again, God bless the dead. And I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, make light of the situation at all. I watched the video and it was, it was horrific. You know, it actually gave me like, it kind of brought me back to the Nipsey situation which is crazy right just basically seeing how callous this man was as he stood over somebody and you know took their life you know that was very very you know those two situations were very very similar as far as the way they played out so I remember just looking at that like damn and then I'm thinking to myself all right but at the same time like I mean listen man Vladimir Matherin and once again God bless but Vladimir was a big dude man you know, based on what I seen in that video, and I'm not sure why. I mean, he got he got close enough to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The gun wasn't out at that point. Personally, I just feel like this situation could have went a whole nother way. Um, Unfortunately, it played out the way it played out. Um, Jason Pass is a coward, and we clearly see seen that. Um, And this is the shit that kills me about this, right? This is the crazy. Look, look at the irony in this. So this man kills this 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 man. He kills him. You know, obviously we see the video. You know, the wife tried to pull him away. He shoots him in his back, which is crazy. It's not even like he charged at him with the scissors, right? He let him get up on him with the scissors, and then he pulls his gun out as he's getting pulled away by his wife to, you know, basically defuse the situation. You waited till, you know, there was no longer a threat even present. Then you draw your weapon and you let off shots. So then obviously at that point, you know, you have the son who's obviously just standing there kind of not really sure. You know, he kind of got caught up in the crossfire. And the son tried to basically, you know, duck off into that corner. And, you know, obviously from, you know, um, from a legal standpoint, I'm pretty sure, you know, we're going to hear things like, oh, he thought he was getting ready to. But in all reality, if you know, you know. And if you watch the video that, you know, Jason Pass or pardon me, let me get my names right. Chinway Mood, right, who is the stepson, obviously was trying to get out of the, the, the way of the bullets, fam. If you shooting in this direction. I'm going to go in this direction. And he tried to go in the opposite direction of the bullets. That's clearly what he was trying to do. And, I mean, listen, man, this man was cold-blooded. And he did not allow him to do that, man. He, you know, he then turned the gun on him and hit him a few times. I'm not really sure. Obviously, the video, like I said once again, um, I'm pretty sure everybody's seen it at this point. So he does this, and then he, you know, he kind of walks and gets onto the elevator casually. He didn't even run down the stairs, fam. He pressed the elevator and waited for it to come to his floor. Got on the bell. We don't know. God knows what he did when he got downstairs, fam. Like, did he walk out of the building? He wasn't walking when the police rolled up on him. And the irony here is 
the very, very weapon or the very, very, you know, uh, action that basically led to you basically discharging your weapon, right, ultimately is the same way that he ended up dying when the police, you know, was able to track Jason Pass, you know, via a license plate reader, you know, which led them to Bath Beach, Brooklyn, which is crazy because I, I really used to work over there, right? I know exactly where this is. Bay 44th. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three day search. Uh, Led authorities there. They were able to kind of, you know, barricade him in or he was barricaded in a home. I'm not really sure what the case may be. All I know is this, fam. All I know is this. He didn't have the beam when the police rolled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That cold-blooded, cold-hearted, stone-cold, two shots, two kills. Jason passed. That guy was no longer... We seen a coward when the police was there. He had a knife. Like, where the gun at now, bro? The police said, now you want to have a knife too? Will you? You ain't have a knife for this guy when he had a knife. Why you ain't pull out the knife then? You, you pull out a whole beam and shit, bro. Now the police say, you don't got a gun no more. You running with the knife. Obviously, they killed him, right? And that's that's just how that story is going to end right there. Another, you know, basically double homicide, you know. Uh, and, I mean, it's it's pretty clear that this guy was, you know, he, he kind of wanted to, he was pretty much. And it's just so unfortunate, man, that there's so many people like this in the world, man, who clearly, who clearly have nothing to live for. You have nothing to live for. You came to that decision. You sat there and you went down that dark hole. And you, this is where you ended up. Why do you feel the need to bring other people with you, fam? I see it every day. I see it all day, every day. But the one thing I also see and the one thing I had to learn, the most important thing I had to learn is that um, everybody just can't go, fam. And you can't allow for people who basically don't have their situations figured out to basically cause you to be confused about where you are going and where you're headed. You have to really just kind of, and this is where that Tunnel Vision Tuesday and that, you know, shows like this became a thing because I just feel like these are things that we have to constantly remind ourselves to have these Tunnel Vision. You have to have Tunnel Vision. If you don't have Tunnel Vision, I'm just not sure how you're going to get to the, you know, to the end of the tunnel, right? Jason Pass ain't had that tunnel vision, fam. And that's why he went there and he did what he did. And now he's no longer here. Um, Obviously, praise and condolences to everybody involved. Y'all know I got, I've been a, I've been a, like a, I'm probably one of the most loyal. I've been team Android for a long time, right? And I actually still have my Androids, which is crazy, right? I still have my original iPhone. I'm kind of like a hoarder on the low. I, st I have certain things. Sometimes I got to, like, judge myself. Like, why well, do I still have this? I still got to just say this, man. I never in a million years thought that I would be, you know, just basically one of those people, man, that you see in the Apple store, sitting in the middle of the Apple store at the at the wooden table. They got a piece of wood carved out, fam. It's a bunch of pieces of wood carved out. If you don't understand where I'm going with this, what I'm basically getting ready to explain to you all is that Apple Care couldn't care any less. Um, Apple Care doesn't care, fam. Apple Care couldn't care. Any less. I mean, and that's just where we're at with it right son, now. Damn, son, where'd you like, find this? So, I, I'm going off on a tangent here, and I'm not even really being specific about what I'm saying. I'm not providing any context, and I know this is horrible, especially considering the fact that this is a podcast, right? I should be providing some context on what I'm saying, right? What I'm basically saying is that I had one of the most horrific experiences at the Apple store. In Williamsburg, yeah, 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 just go to the mom and pop tech shops. If anything ever happens to your iPhone, take it from me, fam. Just pay the five hundred or whatever the fuck it is, bro. At at the at the local 
the, the mom and pop tech shop, fam. The joint, yeah, yeah. The un, there's no banner on there. You don't even, you can't even find that shit sometimes, fam. You don't fucking walk by it and shit. That shit in the cut, right? Yeah, yeah. Go to the mom and pop tech shop because Apple Care couldn't care any less. My phone. So this is what happened, right? So my phone definitely uh fell down a trash chute. I know what you're thinking. How? How does that even happen, fam? From the sixth floor to the basement. My goddamn iPhone Pro Max tumbled and turned down the entire trash chute six flights. And basically what happened was I was basically somewhere where I probably shouldn't even have been at the end of the day, fam. And now that I'm thinking about it, it's just so crazy how you can make just one decision that can literally turn your whole entire week into a nightmare, fam. It was a nightmare, fam. My my phone, I had my phone in my hand, and I basically decided, literally was trying to be like a good Samaritan for real. I'm in the peas and all that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm in the staircase or whatever the case may be. I was on the phone. I decided, all right, let me get up. I'm about to, I seen a, a cup on the floor, literally just a styrofoam cup. Just a styrofoam cup. I felt like I dropped it though. And I wasn't sure. And I said, you know what? They already doing enough in this in these staircases. They already they pissing and all type of shit, fam. I'm not about to contribute to the poverty levels in the projects and shit, right? So I'm like, let me pick up my trash and shit. You feel me? I'm trying to do the right thing. I don't want to litter. I watch those documentaries and shit where they show you basically the effects of like what happens when you litter and like this shit going to the beach, all type of shit, fam. We hurting the, the goddamn sea life. The motherfuckers want to eat salmon and shit, fam. Like, what what are we doing, right? So I don't want to contribute to this, this conundrum. So I say, you know what? Let me pick my trash up. I go to pick up the cup. I pick up the cup. I go to go throw it in the incinerator. So what I didn't take into consideration was the fact that it's an incinerator door, right? These shits is pretty goddamn heavy and sturdy, right? You don't want to just have these shits that accessible to anybody. Like, you don't want a kid to just be able to fly this shit. So they kind of make them a little, it's a little spring on there. So it's like when you, when you pull, it kind of pull you back, right? Type of situation. So I have my phone in my hand. Like I said, I was really just like, I was probably really just tired of some shit, bro. And really need to just be home. I'm not sure what made me, I'm holding my phone. And I open, you know, you it's a handle. You pull the handle down to the left. Then you pull the door open. So my phone is in my hand. And I'm twisting the handle. And I'm pulling the handle back simultaneously with my phone in that same hand, right? I'm trying to paint the picture for you. So what happens is I toss the cup with my right hand. And when I go to let go the door, that shit pulled my arm so goddamn fast. I even have ch- I didn't even have time to, like... Bro, it happened in a split second. My damn iPhone was up in the air in the goddamn incinerator on the sliding on its way down. And the only last ditch effort that I had to save my phone, you guessed it, was my headphones. I had the wired headphones in, right? Thank God. I had At least I had a shot at saving it, right? That kind of made me feel a little bit. But then I also realized right away that if I grab the goddamn wired headphones, that that phone has no chance. I mean, I've done this so many times, right? Like the phone is coming out, right? The, the jack is just going to pull the jack right out. And that's exactly what happened. I watched my phone slide down a dark, dirty, disgusting incinerator to nowhere. And I wasn't even really sure if I was going to be able to I didn't. Run, I ran down those stairs so goddamn fast. I made a scene, all type of shit. I didn't grab somebody by the collar. I'm looking at, you know, what I'm saying, I'm trying to go find, you know, the, you know, they got the building workers and shit. Once they told me where I could go to get the, you know, they showed me where the door was. Basically, like, all right, all the trash goes in there. They open the door. We go in there. I, I mean, we had to do this obviously quickly because you know it's an incinerator, so people are probably throwing trash down as. My phone probably went down with some trash. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I don't know how much trash people throw it out right now. I got to get to it fast because I don't want my shit to be buried under a bunch of trash. You know what I'm saying? And we in the projects, man. Needless to say, listen, I don't want to. It's a lot of shit going down that incinerator, fam. 
Man, we get down there, and sure enough, my shit was right there at the top. You know what I'm saying? I was fortunate, but I wasn't fortunate in the sense that my phone screen was completely uh cracked. I mean, I couldn't believe it, fam. I done dropped this phone so many times. I thought to myself, all right, it's going to go down. The... I didn't think it was going to. But yeah, nah, the screen definitely was cracked. Um, But I was cool with that because I said, you know what? I have Apple Care, right? I have Apple Care, so I'm straight. You feel me? I I I got Apple Care. Yeah, yeah. I paid a little. What is it? Nine ninety nine? Huh? They pull that nine ninety nine right out of your goddamn account too. They do. They never. They right on time with that. They be a day early sometimes. I feel like they taking that damn nine ninety nine, fam, because Apple cares, right? Right. So my phone completely, you know, cracked up. It was garbage and. Debris all in my shit. I had to clean this shit, all type of shit. So long story short, I go on Google. I'm like, all right, let me see where I can get this shit done the quickest and the fastest, basically, right? Like, who's open now? Who can do it today? Who could? I'm trying to get this done right away, type shit, right? That ended up leading me to to the Williamsburg, the Apple in Williamsburg. Now, this is the thing, Williamsburg. Um, I don't really be over there like that. What I will say is this, what I will say is this, I will be back over there again. Uh, Williamsburg, Williamsburg on a Friday night, fam, I didn't realize what was going on over there, right? And how it's just kind of like, you're not even really in Brooklyn, for real. That's like a borough within itself and shit, fam. They got their own shit going on over there, fam. The dispensaries, the clothing stores, it's kind of like, all right. This ain't really how it looked, well, you know, when my phone got broken up and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's a different aesthetic by the peas, right? We don't have these stores over here. Williamsburg is it's, it's a little vibe over there. It's a little vibe over there. It definitely got a nice little view. Once you get to the, like, you know, it's like N8, N7, N6. I ain't going to hold you, fam. When you get to, like, N12 on that side of things... It's really not that many. As a matter of fact, I was literally the only black person over there. That's just a whole... F- I stood there for five minutes, fam. And I looked around for five minutes and waited to see. I was the only black over there on N12. I digress. I'm over there, man. I go to the I, I go to the Williamsburg Apple, man. I go to this place and I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be a five minute in and out situation. I have Apple Care. I pay monthly for this shit, right? So I'm thinking to myself, All right, I ain't really... Of course I go, I go there, you know, I get in my phone, I explain to them the situation. They tell me, you know what, Terrence, no problem, don't worry about it, this is Apple, we're going to take care of it, because Apple cares, and you have Apple care. So I leave them with the phone, I'm like, all right, cool, now I'm walking out, I'm discovering Williamsburg for the first time on a Friday night, right? So I'm kind of, you know, you don't got no phone, you kind of forced to mingle a little bit, right? So I'm kind of in that type of... I mean, you know what I mean? It was a good Friday night until I realized that my phone wasn't going to get fixed, obviously. I'm thinking my phone about to get fixed. It's lit, right? I go to the dispensary and shit. I cop some, what they had over there, some lemon cherry gelato shit. Yeah, they had some heat over there, man. I'm not going to hold you. I probably won't get a pre-roll ever again, though, Um, personally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not really, I kind of took a, I gambled doing that, by the way. That's something that I'm actually, like, against on the low. Like, that pre-roll culture. I don't know, man. I don't really. We never actually see nobody rolling. It's kind of weird to just have these already. Like, how long was this rolled and shit, right? You know what I'm saying? Because I know there's a certain way I like to. Hold on. Let me spark one right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, this is Friday night. I, I leave them on my phone. You know, I come, I walk around. I, you know, I do my thing. I come back. I finally come back. Like, all right, I'm back, guys. So, uh, where's the phone? They kind of look at me. They look like, oh, um, they tried to hit me with like, they didn't even remember me basically. Like, and I kind of, they was giving me a vibe. Like they was basically trying to buy out and get some more time and shit. Like, like I know how to read these situations, man. I've been in these situations myself personally. Right. So it's kind of easy to kind of pick up on that energy when you've been in that situation. Like, damn, I need more time. I'm not ready yet. So I seen that they kind of was giving me the, it's not ready yet. So, you know what? I said, you know what, man? It's lit. It's Friday, man. They out here, man. All right. I'll be back in 30 minutes, man. Do y'all thing, man. Don't worry about it. I ain't tripping. I got Apple Care. I'm good. 
We at the Apple store in Williamsburg. I'm definitely good, right? So I leave, man. I come back in like an hour. Like I get him some more time, some extra time. I'm like, all right, now my shit has to be. I walk in there. It's a whole, like every time you come back, it's two different people at the door, by the way, right? So it's kind of like these people actually didn't see me. Well, no, no. What happened was that happened the first time. This time around, there was a girl that was already there that already kind of saw me and explained to me the situation like they still needed. So I felt like she already seen me. So when I walk in, I'm like, let me let me just address her because she already kind of dealt with me or whatever the case may be. This this dude, you know, what I'm saying I'm not sure like if this, you know, what I'm saying he trying to be Apple employee of the month or I'm not really sure what's going on with his quotas. He's trying to hit some quotas or something. But he was so, like, goddamn determined to come up to me and hit me with the, basically, like, the script, right? The welcome to Apple script. And at that point, like I said, I had waited, you know, I kind of, like, I felt like I kind of overstayed my welcome in Williamsburg at that point, to say the least, right? It started to get a lot lighter. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really see too many people that look like me. I started to feel uncomfortable, for real. I'm like, let me get my phone and get the fuck up out of here, fam. Because I used to, it's documentaries about Williamsburg and shit. And I feel like a few of them motherfuckers are still out there, low key, right? Don't be fooled by all the the glitz and the glam, cause you'll get blinded by all that shit. But in all reality, you're still in Williamsburg, right? Enough said. So at this point, I'm kind of like, all right. I feel like I overstayed my welcome. I need my phone now. Let me. So your man trying to hit me with the welcome to Apple. I'm like, hold on, fam. Check this out. I was just in here like 30 minutes ago. They already kind of, they got my shit. And, you know, he kind of was, like, mad that he ain't really get to get his shit off. But I'm like, fam, you mad, but I'm mad, too, because at this point, I got to go. I had a podcast to edit. Like, I had shit going on is what I'm saying, right? So Shorty kind of was trying to give me, like, a vibe. Like, I'm not really sure. Like, that might have been, like, a home. They might probably go. He looked like he was on some, listen, basically on some Mac Lamar shit, if you catch my drift, fam. And he looked like he was low-key mad that Kendrick won Artist of the Year at the BET Hip Hop Awards or something. Like, he was low-key giving me, like, a a little funny vibe, you feel me? Then Shorty kind of started giving me the funny vibe. Then at that point, I'm like, let me walk by both of y'all, fam. And let me walk in this shit because my phone is in here. And I'm about to leave here with my phone regardless of whatever's going on, right? Then finally, they come out, they explain to me, like, yo, check this out, fam. Yo, the screws on the bottom, we couldn't get them out because your shit has so much dust and debris in it, right? Which I can understand. I'm not going to hold you. I had the phone for like like a good three years. I might have cleaned the bottom. That particular area of the phone that they were that they were showing me, I might have hit that bitch with a Q-tip like four times or something. You feel me? So in all reality, I completely understood the situation, right, when they explained it to me. Like, yeah, nah, those bottom screws, it's kind of hard to get them off with that much debris. But what we can do is get you another phone, right, for the same price. I said, you know what, man? Now you talking my language, then. you Y'all going to give me a new phone for the same price? Cool. I'm cool with that. Let's do that, right? I was a little frustrated. I'm, I'm not going to hold you because I'm like, damn. I kind of like, I wasn't really sure, like, you know what I'm saying? How long is that going to take? I wasn't really sure the process, my screen. But they put a little screen protector over my shit, sent me on my way, you know what I'm saying? Boom. They told me it was going to be three to five business days. Mind you, this is on a Friday, right? So usually three to five business days doesn't start till Monday, right? So I'm thinking in my mind, like, all right, I'm probably not going to get my shit till like about Thursday, Friday-ish on the next following week, basically, right? They hit me up on like a Tuesday, fam. Like, yeah, nah, we got the phone, it's here. I said, word, copy. Wasn't really planning this, but let me make another detour to Williamsburg on a Tuesday now, right? This ain't Friday now. This is just a regular, regular Tuesday. I'm in Williamsburg. It's breezy like a muff. I didn't even realize it was going to be as cold as it was, too. So I'm over there on my bike and shit. It's cold as hell. I said, you know what, though? I'm coming out here for a reason that's important. I need my phone. I mean, I need my phone. There's no way around it, right? I go out there, I'm like, all right, they got it early, cool, whatever the case may be. So I go in there, the two people at the front, she get my name. It was a really no issue this time. I go straight in, sit at the table. I wait. Here come Karen with her iPad and my new phone. So Karen, 
Karen comes out with the iPad, you know, that's where they basically charge you for the, you know, the transaction and all that. I just I just realized that Karen was just a little too excited to put the iPad in front of my face, like basically and charge me for something that I didn't even really get a chance to really like analyze, you know what I'm saying, the situation. Like this new phone and shit, like let me see what's going on. Do, is it working? And that was the first thing that popped in my head. I've been in this situation before, right, to a certain degree. Like I'm not, I listen, I used to work in Circuit City at the end of the day is what I'm saying, fam. So, yeah, 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 that's cool. Y'all work at the Apple Store. I know y'all feel like Circuit City was around way before the Apple Store was even thought of, fam. I was really in there. Yeah, yeah. To explaining to the people with the, you know what I'm saying, with the wires did in certain clocks and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I really had to be that guy is what I'm saying. And then still have to go pull some shit from the back and then deliver it to somebody's car in the parking lot, fam. So this Apple shit y'all doing, like, I've already kind of been here, done that low key, right? Circuit City definitely closed down. Shout out to Circuit City, though, man. Like, we was really in there, like, with the real, you know what I'm saying? Before Apple, I'm just saying, like, you not, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this, right? I know your job. I know the, the roles and responsibilities here, fam. And realistically, I could probably, I should probably apply. I thought about that, too. Like, what if I, I could never work in that type of environment, though, honestly, bro. That shit is just, like, it's too much of an open space. With nothing going on, bro. There's just a bunch of people coming in there with their phones broken and shit. Like, fam, I need some level of, like, you know what I'm saying? This is not, like, a masculine kind of job, basically. Like, you know what I'm This is more of, like, a Karen kind of job. So this is Karen now with the iPad. So I digress. I digress. And realistically, I'm spending a lot of time on this. More time than I anticipated. Cause I'm looking at the clock. It's 50, I'm 57 minutes into the podcast, fam. 11, 16 a.m. on the East Coast. Will Maddie TV. Sometimes I'll be doing the most. The Apple, Apple, Apple care doesn't care, though. And that's where we at right now. And uh, so, look, this is the situation. So, she come out. She basically trying to get me to pay for something that I don't even know is going on, right? So, come to find out. We sit there, I'm sitting there like, hold on, let me just, before I had to make sure my phone was backed up, that was very, very important, to the point where, like, they was getting mad at me. Like, no, 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 you can skip this one. You already backed it up. I was like, no, we not skipping nothing, fam. We gonna wait till this circle, get right here, because I need to make sure every fucking thing on my phone, which it's not, by the way, right? So they basically, they, they damn near violated me is what they did. I damn near, they made me wipe my phone out, all this shit, bro, to give me a phone, a new phone, a new phone that doesn't work, bro. They gave me a new broken phone, fam. This is worse than what I had. I'm better off with the screen crack. And that's basically what ended up happening. So I ended up having to leave again. I took a Tuesday, Tuesday. I'm in Williamsburg at the Apple store. I'm cold as fuck, mad as hell, right? And I didn't even get, I, I ended up leaving with my original phone, which is the broken screen phone, right? They done fucking broke it more, trying to put the, the screen protector on there. This shit don't even fit. So it's like they clearly was pressing on the screen because it was more cracks on it. I ended up having to leave with my old broken phone. I had to restore my shit back onto the broken phone. It was a whole fucking mess. It was a mess, bro. They completely detoured and derailed me. My whole week, bro. And low key, that's really why I probably ain't really dropped the pod. They took me out of my zone and shit. Like, I, I lost my momentum and shit. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple did that to me, fam. And I'm here to just let y'all know that Apple care does not care, fam. They don't care. Take your money and go to Android, fam. I'm letting y'all know right now, fam. Go to Boost Mobile, T-Mobile. Shout out to T-Mobile. They definitely got the, yeah, T-Mobile's, they stepping their shit up, too, over there. I ain't gonna hold you, fam. Apple is just like, I don't know, man. I just feel like, I don't know, man. And then low-key, I feel like they was basically trying to really get me to upgrade to the 15 is what they was doing. So they was basically trying to, like, prolong the process. Like, come on, my nigga. You got the pro, this is like an iPhone. I don't even know what number I have at this point. They dropped so many goddamn phones. The reality of the situation is this. I paid over a band for this phone. I'm not upgrading this anytime soon, fam, until I feel like 
my nigga, what can you possibly impress me with with a new phone at this point? I'm just at a point now where I don't feel the need to. I don't utilize all of those features. I don't, bro. What you gonna tell all oh, the cameras and better? My nigga, I right, I have a camera, number one. It's not like a Canon, like one of the HD. I do need one of those, actually. But I'm just saying, man, if you're not talking about like something that's like, come on, man. Is there like a microphone in there built in to where I don't need to use an external podcast mic? Now, if they got some shit like that, if they start gearing shit towards some podcast shit, like, you know what I'm saying? I just discovered GarageBand for the first time, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, son, where'd you find this? I literally, yesterday, understand what I'm saying. It's November 5th, 2023. On November 4th, 2023, I, for the first time ever, discovered garage man on the on the iphone I, I had no clue what this was bro i had no clue that you literally it's a whole goddamn studio in this shit like i didn't realize what was going on and what i'm saying is this man what i'm saying is this the ebcg album just i'm just saying man stay tuned man i'm just saying we ain't get a lot of hip-hop albums this year right maybe i need to you know what I'm saying? Load up the garage band demo real quick on y'all. Yeah, now nah, this shit is amazing, bro. It's actually a real I had no idea. And I've heard obviously I've heard Garage Band a thousand times. But I was under the impression that that was actually like a real band, basically. You know what I'm saying? Garage band? Like I thought that was a band and shit for real. It might be at this point. That might be the name of my album. That might be the name of this episode. Because the one thing that we do know is that everybody, everybody, simply <laughs> can't go. I'll fuck with this, though. You could really just, like, break out in the, on the train. I don't be seeing the music and this shit. They bugging, bro. You don't even need the guitar no more on the train. They on there with the instruments still, taking up mad space and shit. With hats and shit. Hold on, man. All you need is garage band, fam. Everybody could get to it now on the train and make a little extra side money on their way to work and shit. I might have a little guitar solo for niggas tomorrow. Hold on. I jump right on that L train. <laughs> Realistically, I have no reason to be on the train anymore. Uh fortunately, I'm in a situation. Where I don't have to take the train to work anymore. But that might be changing really, really soon anyway. Because realistically, fam, you can't keep me stagnant for, you know, I don't care how convenient a situation is. I don't care if, how much you pay me. At a certain point, when something's just not making sense anymore, I got to look for the exit in that door. And that's kind of where I'm at with it right now with this current situation, which is actually a new situation. But yeah, 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 yeah man. It, I, it's leadership, man. Leadership is very, very important, man. You can't just put anybody to lead me. It's just not going to work. You feel me? Um, And we clearly can see that we are in a time right now where leadership is at an all-time low. We see what's going on out here. And I'm just saying, fam, I need to be in charge of what's going on. Um, Kai Sinat, Kai Sinat definitely, uh, <laughs> uh, pardon himself. I don't really even know how to, like, come in with this. Like, what do I say about Kai Sanat that hasn't already been said? Um, Obviously, this young man has taken the internet by storm. Uh, Nah, but in all reality, though, he really has. He really has. And, um, I mean, there's no, there's no way around it. There's no way around this. Kai Sanat is, is the face of kind of the new internet, the new, the new wave of, Um, basically the YouTuber has basically evolved into basically the streamer. And right now we're seeing that kind of evolve into something else right now that we don't quite really know what to call it right now. We just kind of sitting back, we just kind of watching and we're just seeing how it's playing out. Obviously, you know, the influence of the influencer, right, is something that we've kind of been 
seeing play out, you know, obviously that whole situation that occurred a couple of months back, Union Square, the Union Square riots, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, Kasha not um, ultimately, you know, led that, that riot, right? And I, although we do know that that was not the intent, right? And, you know, basically, he kind of had to just come to grips with how much influence he actually had. And the amount of people that actually showed up to to Union Square, you know, because he kind of went on in one of his streams and announced what he announced. Um, I do feel like at this point, he's fully, fully aware. You know, what I mean, we kind of was giving him the benefit of the doubt with that whole like, all right, maybe he has to kind of understand, like, I right, the position that he's really in right now, as far as the amount of influence you have and who you're influencing ultimately at the end of the day it's a lot of young people it's a lot of people younger than you um i would imagine m majority of his demo are children right that are pretty much his age or younger right if not much younger um so m when it comes to this whole you know this seven days in prison stream that he's doing right now this is my whole thing, right? I have no issue with any stream that any stream is doing ultimately, right? I do feel like at the end of the day, we ultimately have the option and have the choice to go click and click off our computer. You could turn your phone off. It's so many ways to avoid this. You could go sit and go down a rabbit hole in 2K. I do it all the time, fam. I am not on planet Earth most of the time. I'm not, bro. And when I'm ready to leave Earth, I'm out of here, bro. None of this shit has any significance, ultimately, is what I'm saying. And that's just for me, Willmatic TV. That's me personally, right? But obviously, everybody can't go, and everybody doesn't have the ability to kind of hone in and lock in and lock out and box out, you know, the unwanted, unnecessary, you know, uh, things that may possibly be hindering your point of view or whatever the case may be. But obviously, when you're dealing with younger people, Right. When you're dealing with younger people who more than likely are in homes and households where there's no leadership there, more than likely, right? So they're gonna go on the internet and they're gonna see a Kai Sanat and they're gonna say to themselves, Well, damn, this looks like it's a lot of fun. You know, somebody who's very, very, you know, relatable. And at the end of the day, like I said, I have I have no issues with Kai Sanat at all. I do feel like you know, I do feel like there's something there as far as obviously his influence, number one, and overall, right? He didn't get into this position for no reason, right? He, he had to put in a lot of time and a lot of work, and he was able to figure out something to get this much amount of people to kind of, you know, um, kind of be tuned into, you know, all of these streams that he's doing. I will say this. His latest, his latest effort, though, was a miss for me personally, right? And that's all I'm going to say. I'm just speaking on this from a specifically from a creative standpoint, just as a creator, nothing more, nothing less. I'm not looking at this from the standpoint of, oh, you got to you got to be the, you know, it's kids watching you and you. Because like I said, at the end of the day, it's not really I don't feel like it's fair to put that responsibility and put that onus on somebody who basically is just on the Internet posting their content you know there's no guarantees and there's no you know there's really no way to kind of even pinpoint who's gonna watch the videos right you're just kind of basically taking a shot in the dark right and seeing what's gonna you know land and what's not and at the end of the day i do feel like it's not his responsibility but i do feel like once you're at a level where you understand and recognize your influence and then you still make a conscious decision to you know basically promote and perpetuate certain stereotypes that are possibly you know detrimental to the communities where most of your viewers more than likely um basically come from i just feel like at that point i gotta take a step back just knowing better and being an adult in this situation right and at the end of the day listen i'm not a i'm not watching all the costs and not streams at the end of the day i don't see most of that stuff I literally had to go and fight, search for this, just for the simple fact that I heard about what was going on. I wasn't really sure. I seen a couple of clips, and I'm not going to hold you, man. Like I said, man, from a creative standpoint, from a creative standpoint, I don't, this ain't it, man.
come on, we somebody got to just say it, man. And I, this ain't even about the old generation or the young generation. None of that, bro. Miss me with all that. I feel like it's kids from the younger generation that are supremely talented and would never do something like this. You know what I'm saying? This is not it, bro. This is not it, bro. You trying to tell me this? They they came up with the idea to do a seven days in prison. I, I'm not even sure if that's the title of it. I seen that on something, and I just I just ran with it. I believe that seven days in prison is actually the name of the stream. Um, and my thoughts on all of it is that it's just not good entertainment. It's not. It's not good. It's not good, bro. And personally, obviously, you know, like I said, just me knowing better, the optics, it just doesn't. I just don't really see what the entertainment value in it is. I do I do see that there's a big budget behind it, though. And shout out to the Joe Budden podcast. You know, they kind of, they spoke on this, right? I usually, I hate the fact that I listen to to the podcast and, I, and then I'm dropping my, like, I let them beat me to the punch and shit, fam. I'm all behind, but it's all good, though. It's all good, though, because my taste is always, you know what I'm saying, special, right? I put a little signature on mine that I don't really feel like everybody can't really deliver the takes like I deliver the takes, right? So realistically, what I'm saying is we might have the same takes, but we never could have the same take for real. They had this take, though, as far as, like, they basically mentioned the fact that, like, they trying to, like, not, you know, you don't want to be too the old head in the situation or whatever the case may be. But, fam, I got a case. Like, I I was just in there. I seen, and this is not even, like, on no... Like, I served a whole bunch of time, like, me just going in and out of that and just seeing the inner workings of that, there would never be a point in my life, personally, where I could, I just don't even see how that's even an option, is to to get a big budget, you know, they that's what they pointing out, the Joe Budden podcast, they basically was speaking on the fact that it looks like there's a lot of money behind Kai Sinat, and I would have to agree, right, he didn't do this on his own. There's a budget behind this. There's a there's somebody behind this. There's crowdsourcing. There's funding behind this kid. And you're trying to tell me that the best idea that they could come up with, with a young black, you know, kid coming out of the inner cities with all of this influence to influence all of these other young black kids to possibly do the same thing, to rise up out of that poverty, right? To utilize the internet and this new technology to to kind of figure out a way to, to basically generate income and, you know, a, a stream of revenue. You trying to tell me that with all of that, this is what they could come up with? That's the that's the only issue that I have with it. I just feel like it's it's low hanging fruit. It's um, you know, it's a missed opportunity, is what it is. It's a missed opportunity, man. I just feel like we're lacking, you know, and we speak about this all the time, you know just black film and just basically how how we've kind of regressed you know when it comes to black films and you know black significant films with you know meanings behind them and things of this nature i just feel like if you're gonna put a budget behind somebody with that much influence i just feel like there's so much other things that we could have did and that's all i'm gonna say obviously you know um the internet they going to eat this shit up, man. You know these kids, man. They sitting. They watching all type of shit, man. I, I'm, I'm learning so much about, like, this new generation. It's kind of weird, some of the shit I be hearing. Like, this whole... There's, like, a, 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 a segment of kids who, like, basically go on YouTube to watch basically a slime or just, like, slime, slimy things and shit like that. Like, I got to learn all of that shit, man. I might have to start, like, listen, if you're doing visuals and shit... Maybe all that stuff is like, that's noteworthy is what I'm saying, right? This is what they want to see. They want to see Slime and they want to see Kai Sinat in prison with a bunch of other streamers. Um, Yeah, yeah. So that was basically my take on it. I just feel like they could they could do a lot better. I feel like they're going to have to spend a block with that budget and we got to come up with something that's a little bit more. Listen, man, I see DDG. I see, listen, man, I just see the potential of where this thing could go. I do like the idea of all of the streamers, though, coming together to to collaborate. That's dope, you know? And I feel like there's something there, man, but just not in prison, though. Not there. Not in there. There's something there, but not in there. We don't want to see Costa not in prison. I don't, you know, with a bunch of other young black streamers. Um, 
that's just my take on that. I guess we get into some sports now, huh? Come on, man. Come on. I've been holding back the sports takes. Listen, man, like I said, man, it's so hard. It's so tough to get over that hump, you know. And like I said, uh, I, it, was, it was just, you know, man, it's a lot of dark things going on, man. Sometimes you don't want to come in pod, bro. You don't. I had to sleep on it, y'all. Real talk. You should have heard me on the mic yesterday. I said, Mike, ch- I'm not doing this shit. I couldn't. I just didn't have it. You know what I'm saying? I had it, but I didn't have it, if that made sense. I'm going to tell you who had it and who didn't have it on Saturday, right? Last Saturday, that is, because like I said, I'm a little late. I'm a little outdated and all that. You know what I'm saying? Really? But not really, though, because this has this is kind of still current. And what I'm speaking on, <clears throat> hold on, let me clear my throat for this. I want them to really... You know what I'm saying? Get my diction on this one. Pause. 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 But Francis and Ganu versus Tyson Fury um was definitely, you know, an event that, you know, was built up to be really just expected unexpected for real. Um and that's that's kind of you know what the situation was here. Um, there was really no expectations for me, like I had said on the previous episode. I definitely did say that I had no expectations, and I definitely was expecting for this to be everything that it was basically promoted to be, man. Kind of like a you know just like an exhibition, man. It was kind of like just a for the casual fighting fan who just wanted to see, who was just curious, and you just wanted to see. What happens when you throw a heavyweight MMA guy in a boxing ring with Tyson Fury, right? Um, and basically what happened was is, is Francis Ngannou shocked the world is what he did. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. There's no way around it. Francis Ngannou, he came out there with all of the talk, all of the, you know, speculation all of the the critics the doubters the haters and ariel hawani once again ariel hawani is probably going to be a name that you hear me say quite often on my podcast because like i said once again the mma hour and you know the amount of content that this guy is over there providing and those exclusive interviews man exclusives every fighter You know, in the fight game, not just on the MMA side, but also on the boxing side of things, they pull up to that show. And I feel like it's truly, truly the only show for real that's pro the fan and pro the fighters. And you get all of that all in one. And it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Ariel Hawani, you know, definitely did a great job of pointing out basically all of the critics. He had a whole show where he basically... Man, you know, because like this, like I said, this has been something that's been being built up and speculated upon. Ariel Hawani was right there in the middle of all this. And Francis was on his show before the fight got announced. And, you know, he kind of had they kind of had their conversations about it. So, you know, for him to kind of have that full circle moment now where he's able to kind of say like, nah, nah. But this guy was talking crazy, fam, And he had all of the receipts and it was an amazing show, amazing show. He basically, you know, highlighted all of the spectators and Chael Sonnen being one of them. And then he came on the show and they kind of had their little back and forth. And it was good stuff. It's great stuff. All of it is great. I feel like Francis Ngannou, this, you know, this fight is basically is going to do something great for his career. And ultimately, he was not able to get the victory. He didn't win the fight, you know, but. He probably won the war here just for the simple fact that he definitely won the money. He won the bag. Hold on. Air horn for, for winning the bag. Yeah. 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 He won the bag because at the end of the day, like I said, there was no expectations for Francis Ngannou to get in a boxing ring with Tyson Fury, let alone any boxer. But Tyson Fury, come on, man. The boxing world was basically getting ready to. Man, they packed they packed a lunch to come and watch somebody. They thought this was gonna be a field trip. 
for, for, for Tyson Fury with Francis Ngannou in there. But what ended up happening was, what ended up happening was, was Francis called him a one. And that's exactly what I predicted um, on episode 45. Everybody can't go, you know, green with envy. Out now, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Radio Public, EBCG Podcasts, Apple. Did I mention Apple? Spotify. I'm out here, man. I'm out here. I mentioned this on the last episode for sure, where I basically said that Francis is probably going to catch him with one. And that's exactly what he did, fam. He called him with one. He called him with one. And I'm not going to hold you, man. It surprised me that he, you know, not that he called him with one, but that he actually was able to kind of really, he dropped Tyson Fury is what he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He dropped him, you know. We ain't seen Tyson Fury get dropped like that since that Deontay Wilder knockdown when he sat up like the Undertaker. And it was looking like that Tyson Fury again. He got up. His legs was, his knees was buckled. His his eyes started kind of, like, he really caught him with a legit. I didn't think his power was going to really play a factor in this because, obviously, like I said, you got an MMA fighter coming into the boxing realm. And, you know, those gloves, obviously, we're dealing with two different size gloves here. So in the MMA, they don't, they got the three ounce gloves on, right? Which is basically like that's a knuckle. You 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 taking the knuckle to the head most of the time when you getting punched in the MMA, right? Whereas with boxing, these are more like pillows on their hands. So I wasn't really sure if that was going like take away his power. Um, obviously that wasn't an issue. He still he still clearly has the punching power in boxing too, which is crazy, right? Because now it's starting to set up other opportunities, right? And now you got other guys out there like Deontay Wilder, right? Another guy who fought Tyson Fury and was unsuccessful in uh, getting the victory. But now Deontay Wilder versus Francis is looking like a real conversation now. And from what I'm hearing and from what's being speculated is that this may be an MMA fight. Now... Listen, listen, man, listen, listen to me and listen to me very, very carefully. I'm not really sure why Deontay Wilder at this stage in his career and with all of the success that he's garnered, I'm not even sure why he would even be considering getting inside of an MMA inside of the octagon. But what I will say is this, if this is actually a real thing, I mean, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how much, I'm not sure do I, like, yeah, of course I'm going to watch that, but I, again, Chael Sonnen, like I said, was on the Ariel Hawani show, he did bring up a good point when he basically spoke on the significance of the fight, right, and a lot of times what happens is you have fights, you know, that don't really, basically, what what is the significance in a win here, right? If Deontay Wilder and Francis Ngannou fight MMA, what is that setting up either fighter for after the fight, right? So in other words, if Deontay Wilder wins an MMA fight against Francis Ngannou, which is very, very highly unlikely, right? What? All right, then what's next for you after that? At this point, we just don't want it to become a situation where they just put in fights together just for the sake of, right? Because at the end of the day, fam, you know, this is a very brutal sport. And, you know, at the end of the day, listen, man, these guys are trying to make money, too, though, at the end of the day, fam. So maybe I need to just fall back. Maybe they really just running it up. And maybe they really got to, they might be just kind of working together low-key. Like, we about to get a bag out of this, right? Usyk, Usyk is definitely still out there. And obviously, you know, Tyson Fury, he signed that contract you know, prematurely, you know, underestimating Francis Ngannou in his upcoming fight with him, he basically went ahead and signed a contract for the Usyk fight ahead of time, like basically saying that he was supposed to be fighting Usyk in December, right? Which is next month, right? And clearly we've seen how he looked after that fight with Francis and he didn't look like he was ready to fight next month. And Clearly, he agreed, and his corner agreed, because they definitely pushed that fight back to 2024. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Tyson about to go sit his ass down a little bit. He need to go, you know what I'm saying? 
trim some fat off of his back. Like, fam, you need to sit down, my boy. You doing a lot of jumping around. Like, you not really Tyson at the end of the day, fam. Like, it's cool. We get it. You got named after him and your pops. His dad is crazy like him. His dad at the press conference, he's sitting there calling out Ty- Mike Tyson to a fight and shit. Like, fam, you really about to do this, bro? Mike Tyson sitting there like... They basically like it was a it was a circus is what it was, it was a circus, but I mean kudos to Francis and Gandu man. Like I said, I didn't really have any expectations um of this fight, other than the fact that I felt like he had a puncher's chance of catching him with one. That's what he did. Now you know, fortunately for him, this is good for him because now that's gonna open up the door for more fights for him. I will say that I'm I'm curious to see how Dana White responds to all of this. Because obviously we already know Dana White and Francis Ngannou, the UFC, they kind of have a you know a strained relationship, uh, to say the least. And there's been a lot of back and forth there. Obviously Dana White was the guy who basically insinuated that Francis Ngannou was afraid to get in the octagon with John Jones. Obviously Francis Ngannou, after this performance, is not a guy that we can say his name and fair in the same sentence anymore. He clearly is not afraid of any fight. I mean, he went into another world to fight their best and he performed. So that's why I'm just curious to see how Dana White kind of responds to this. And obviously the John Jones and Stipe fight, which I don't want to spend that much more time on this because I'm not going to hold you. I spent like 40 minutes on the MMA last episode and shit. It's a lot of fights right now and it's a lot going on in that world, right? So I just want to make sure that we, but what I'm saying is this, John Jones and Stipe was canceled, 11-11, so that fight is no longer happening, uh, unfortunately. So we're not really sure how long John Jones, I believe he has a pec tear or a pectoral tear, something with his pec. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he was trying to, if he did too much push-ups, he wasn't stretching enough, not drinking enough water. We don't know what his pec, we don't, what happened. All we know is the fight is canceled, man. There's no more steep A. John Jones fight. 11-11 MSG. The card is still taking place, and they have they have since announced another fight um, in the main event. I'm just not, I just don't care to really, like, basically uh, investigate further. I just know John Jones is not fighting, fam. But what I will say is this. When he does get back, whenever that is, sometime in 2024... I don't know, springish, huh? Summertime, maybe June-ish? All I'm saying is this, man. We need to see Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury. Pardon me. <laughs> we already seen that. Uh, so I just dropped the bomb for no reason. All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. 2024 obviously is right around the corner. We don't really know what the significance of John Jones' injuries are, but what I'm saying is this. We need to see John Jones versus Francis Ngannou. And that's all I'm saying, fam. That's the bottom line. That's 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 just that's the the deal that needs to be done. And I'm just going to be just basically going we going to fall back because Francis right now, I'm sure Francis, he probably in Africa somewhere. He probably got a goddamn, he just probably bought some damn elephants and shit. I'm sure he's basically getting ready to live it up for a little bit, right? After that performance. And uh, kudos to him, man. Kudos to him. Hopefully he he running up. You know, I feel like Tyson Fury definitely underestimated his opponent and overcalculated the bag. Yeah, that's what he did. He thought, all right, I'm going to get a bag real quick. This MMA nigga, man, I ain't beat this nigga up, man. He thought he was going to go in there and play with son. Son wasn't playing, though. Dropped him, did a whole dance over him, all type of shit, fam. He turned him into a meme, fam. Now he got a poster that he could forever look at and say, yeah, I was there. I did that. Kudos, man. Kudos to Francis Ngami. Facts. Big facts. We waiting to see what's next for him. Obviously, you have other, you know, guys out there, Anthony Joshua, you know, um, Andy Ruiz. There's other fighters out there who we kind of waiting to see. I'm pretty sure they sitting back and they watching all of this. Like, hold on, fam. Don't forget about me. I'm still over here with a couple of wins, too. Like, I want to I wanna get in there and mix it up. 
Speaking of mixing things up, man, the NBA has definitely been a mixy. It's been a lot of mix up going on. Uh, a lot of mix up, a lot of trades, a lot of trades, a lot of trades. I mean, a lot of trades. We got so many trades. We got so many teams with new players. We got so many teams or so many players. That's like a tongue twister. So many teams with new players and so many players with new teams and new jerseys this season. On the top of that list right now, as I report this to you, James Harden has officially been traded. Yeah, yeah, it's officially happened now. It's finally over. The saga is over. The long, oh, James Harden is not coming to practice. He doesn't want to play with Philly. Embiid in the process. In the pro- I don't know what. Actually, in all reality, we might need to investigate the Philadelphia 76ers, man. I just feel like we have a long list of players that just, I don't know, man. Like, it was, it's supposed to work, but for whatever reason, they just went out of here, bro. Right, we never thought we'd see Allen Robinson in a Memphis Grizzlies jersey. I, uh, let's just let's just talk about it now. Now I'm now I'm about to turn up, fam. Because realistically, I just seen something the other day that an old video I did and shit. I had the Iverson jersey on, man. Listen, that was, that was some dark times for me, man. But we should have never seen an Iverson Memphis Grizzlies stint in the NBA, right? And 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 obviously Philadelphia, you know, there's there's always kind of been like a rocky relationship between that team or that city and their star player. You know, Jimmy Butler was another one of those individuals. Obviously, we kind of seen how that Ben Simmons situation played out, but the James Harden situation hit differently just for the simple fact that I don't know, man. It, it just kind of started to feel like maybe it's you at this point, right? This is your third or fourth goddamn team in, in like, two seasons, bro. Like, seriously, bro? At what point are you going to just be able to come in and just focus on the task? Like, why is there always some other extracurricular things going on? At this point, at this point, we don't really have to ask any of those questions anymore. I feel like we had a point now with James Harden and Philadelphia where we don't, we no longer have to ask these questions. Um... Yeah, because he's no longer there, man. So James Harden definitely got shipped off to the Los Angeles Clippers. Okay, so Marcus Morris Sr., Nicholas Batum, Robert Covington, and Kenny Martin Jr., all players, I feel like all of these players played for Philly already. Like I said, Philadelphia is like just like a, that shit is like just like a hub of free agents and disgruntled players and shit, bro. Covington was over there already, no? Covington is like, how many times has he been traded, bro? Like, a lot of these players are just like trade package pieces and shit. And that's literally like their their role that they play and shit. Like, when we got a big trade and we got a big player we trying to get, fam, just know you getting packed up, fam. So don't get too comfortable over here in Utah, nigga. Because you might, this is crazy. They got four players. Marcus, hold on. And then multiple draft picks. Okay. The Bucks, uh, the Clippers also get P.J. Tucker, who is another player I feel like just seems to kind of get bounced around the league. But one thing about P.J. Tucker, he always finds himself in that situation where he can win a ring. Like, I don't know if that's just like just his PR team is just that ill. I don't know if he just, he might just be the sneaker plug. So, like, they probably just like, fam, we need you in the locker room, bro. He probably got access to sneakers that they don't have access to or something. He might really be that guy, is what I'm saying. Cause he's always in the locker room. You understand what I'm saying? Making a playoff run and shit without even scoring and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't score, is what I'm saying. Uh, We don't really know what he does on the court. But what I'm saying is this we about to see, we about to see what James Harden does on the court. With Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and obviously his former teammate Russell Westbrook, so this is a reunion for them. Um, there there, there was definitely a clip I seen circulating where they kind of was in the locker room, kind of joking with each other, which is always good to see when a player, you know, what I'm saying, is finally like in that situation where they they're comfortable now, or whatever the case may be. Um, realistically, fam, are the Clippers gonna win a championship ring this season? Absolutely not. I still got Boston as, you know, a lock 
to completely sweep the playoffs this year. They might they might four and zero every. I'm, what I'm saying is this: they're about to make history this season. There is no way that Boston is not getting the ring this season. Um, they definitely didn't get me my money line though on FanDuel yesterday against the Nets. Shout out to Cam Cam Thomas. You know what I'm saying for getting to it. But Spencer Dinwiddie, come on, fam, two more assists. I was two assists and two points away, fam, from greatness. But that's a whole nother story. And low key, shout out. I think FanDuel. I don't know sometimes, man. If they really are they in cahoots with the player? How do they not get two more? I just feel like if I see my 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 name on a money line, fam, and I see what my assignment is, bro. Y'all need eight assists out of me, fam. You know motherfuckers is trying to get out of poverty and shit, right? You know that a lot of people, like, people's lives are dependent on you. You couldn't get me eight goddamn assists, but it's cool, though. It's cool, though. I got something pending right now, a little later. Shout out to, and we're going to get to the Spurs in just a second. But I'm definitely going to be looking at that Spurs. Who are they playing, the Rockets? They definitely got them by 20, right? That's an easy, that's a surefire. They can't, they have nobody over there. Right, Jalen Green. Shout out to so James Harden definitely yeah, yeah he on the Clippers now um so we looking forward to seeing that um also um I I feel like did I have something else I wanted to add oh yeah the the Clippers yeah they definitely just had um a very very competitive game against the Lakers um LeBron James is still that man um it's it's truly truly amazing. Truly, truly amazing. I mean, to just see that LeBron James, you know, in year 20, uh, is basically still basically playing how he was playing when he was 20. I mean, is this is this not he's still LeBron James, bro. LeBron James, LeBron James, he's still that guy. He's still catching Tomahawk behind the head. Austin Reeves, y'all saw the highlight. Come on, man. We all saw that damn highlight, bro. Austin Reeves threw that thing right over the head. Right there, Braun caught it. I don't even think it was a good alley, bro. But Braun caught that shit anyway. Cocked it back. It's still, it's still, you know, the Lakers definitely still have a good chance of, you know, getting back to the, you know, the finals and stuff. I think AD is definitely, they're they going to need him a lot this season. And hopefully, you know, depending on what the health of these players are, hopefully everybody could kind of stay healthy. Um, Victor Wembenyana makes history um 38 points 10 10 rebounds um the youngest player to have this stat line since his opponent that he faced in that game Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns obviously you know um Wemby is here man it's a real thing like it's not it's not a game it's not it's not a game it's not a game it's not a joke it's not a gimmick this is really about to be, you know, yeah, the Wemby, the Wemby takeover is definitely happening, man. You know, this kid is coming in, what is he, 19? 19 years old. Obviously, we see what his physical build is and, you know, his mechanics at this point, And we kind of see now, I feel like every game, you, you, you kind of get a more clear understanding of just basically how deadly this guy is going to be in the league. I mean... Once they fully, or once he fully, and that's the other part that's scary. You're looking at a player that doesn't even fully recognize or understand what they're capable of yet, but just knows that they have this skill and that they know how to utilize it, right? Once he gets that full understanding of what he is and what he's, bro, I'm telling y'all right now, this is about to be, this is going to be the greatest player we've ever seen in the league, bro predicated upon I mean hopefully he can stay injury free and that's kind of like the big thing right there obviously we know with taller players injuries especially when we're dealing with a player with his build you know his his frame he's so thin and then also which is probably going you know that might be a good thing because you know he's obviously very athletic as well so he's doing a lot of jumping up blocking shots he blocking he could block your shot from the damn he at the rim, you at the free throw line, fam. He's blocking your shot type shit. Like, this is a phenomenon that we have never seen before. Obviously, they have that kind of debate and that conversation kind of going around right now where it's like, Bo Bo, 
Come on, fam. We seen we seen Wemby before. We got Bo Bo. This is the thing, right? About that. I heard that and I took heed of that. I did. I said, you know what? Maybe they might be on to something there. Bo Bo kind of was. So what I did is I took it upon myself to kind of go back and remind myself of what Bo Bo fam. All you gotta do is go to YouTube. That's all you gotta do. Go to YouTube and type in Bo Bo Career Highlights, fam. Bo Bo is not Victor Wembignana. It's not even close, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, it's almost a joke at this point. I literally woke up at 4 a.m., fam, this morning. I did. I woke up at 4 a.m. I couldn't go back to sleep. I said, you know what, fam? I'm probably not going to ever have a chance to get this. I'm, I'm never going to watch Bo Bo highlights, right? So this is probably the best. That's like the time where you get all that shit off that you're usually not going to have time to do. I said, you know, I'm never going to watch this. Let me try to get this off now. I clicked on them goddamn highlights, fam. It might have been two plays where it was like, all right, I could kind of see why y'all would say that. But, man, if you really watch, like, Bo Bo has two moves, fam. Two moves. He got two moves, bro. The Euro and the goddamn behind the back, fam. He literally had the same two moves in every highlight. Now, it's amazing because he's tall and obviously Manute Bowl, his, you know, he's a second generation tall guy in the league. That's kind of just like a good story. You want to kind of just see him succeed, right? Just because we know who his dad is and we know his pedigree and the cloth that he's cut from, fam. Basketball lineage. But at the same time, it's like you got two moves and you've been on five teams. Um, Victor Wemiana was the number one draft pick. Victor, I mean, like, it's just, if you really go down the line of comparing comparison and comparing contrast, they're completely two polar opposites. Physically, everything. What Victor Wemiana is doing early in his career, right? I mean, listen, fam, how many goddamn 38 and 10 games did Bo Bo have? You show me those stats. I haven't seen them. I mean, we certainly didn't see that on his, his third game in the league. Right. So I feel like, yeah, yeah, that narrative kind of has to end up, you know, the best way for us to really kill that narrative is for us to kind of see how it plays out when those two players match up against each other. But I think Bo Bo, isn't he on the Phoenix Suns? I think we've seen that. Didn't we just see that? I didn't watch the game clearly because then I would have clearly been able to say, yeah, we just seen that. But I don't believe that Bo Bo, they might have him as like a... They might have sent him back down to the G League or something. I don't know if he's on the roster right now. But I'm I tell you this, I'm pretty sure and I'm listen, I'm pretty sure that Victor Wemiana want to see that man cuz I'm sure he hearing all that talk. I know he do. He hear all the talk, man. He seems like he's in tune. And I mean, like I said, man, this 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 historic game that he just did, man, I feel like this is going to be the first of many. Obviously it is. There's no, there's no denying it, man. Victor Wemiana is definitely here to stay. He's the real deal. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's similar to like the uh, when Trey Young came to the league, and they were kind of saying things about Trey Young as far as is he ready right now? Like he, he might be a little too small and shit. Like how are he gonna be able to? And Trey Young obviously came to the league, and you know he carved out his own lane. And I feel like Victor Wemiana is getting ready to do the same exact thing. Um amazing amazing historic a lot of history being made i feel like damian lillard i'm a little late with this one but damian lillard's milwaukee's bucks debut sets a franchise record most points scored by a player in any debut game uh 39 eight rebounds he was 17 for 17 um free throws was 100 percent. so obviously dame is basically putting the league on notice right and he's putting M- Milwaukee on notice and Portland, by the way, who I'm pretty sure is looking right now because uh, Scoot Henderson is definitely not. He ain't really getting, you know, that boost, that good. He ain't getting that Gatorade boost that you get in 2K right now, fam. He ain't getting that head start in, in my career. He off to a slow, rocky start in the league, fam. Yeah, yeah, he going to need to see Brickley's all type of shit, fam. You going to need some more... <laughs> Nigga, you gonna need VC, all type of shit, bruh. Scoot Henderson ain't really that guy right now. So I'm sure Portland is low key. They still looking at Dame over there like, damn, we ain't really wanna trade you, but we kinda had no choice. So yeah, Dame is putting the league on notice. I feel like the Bucks is going, you know, 
They're going to find their rhythm. They're going to find their chemistry. Um, LeBron is definitely still LeBron. Um, I think it was dope to see that Bronny was at the game. And obviously, we're still waiting to see, all you know, Bronny and Bron, and that's still very much a real thing. Um, I really don't have anything else at this point. I'm low-key looking at the docket, um, and I'm trying to, like, even remember. Yeah, I went 45 minutes in. Um, new music, as far as new music, I feel like we ended on new music. Um, obviously, you know. Well, no, not obviously. First of all, DJ K Slay, the drama king. Hold on, man. Air horn for K Slay. God damn it. I said DJ. Wasn't fast enough. I said DJ K Slay. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. The drama king, man. Hold on. Damn. <laughs> I'm really like losing my, my pod voice on y'all. Hold on. Let me get right. Yeah, yeah. The drama king. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um Who who else would still I mean, 50th year hip hop, obviously DJ K Slay, you know. I feel like this is just another way of basically, you know, um saying or showing us what we already kind of knew and that DJ K Slay is basically here to stay. Um, and that legacy and what he laid down is, is basically something that will always be able to to be carried on because ultimately what K Slay was doing was he was going to get the dopest MCs and he was bringing people together. So to see the you know the fact that they are still able to kind of do that in his honor is super dope. And you know I say all that to say this: 50th year hip hop, you know DJ K Slay rolling 200 deep. Rolling 200 deep, fam. Come on, fam. I literally sat there for that whole hour and 20 minutes, fam. And I I, I rewinded it a few times. I actually got to listen to it back because there's a few people I didn't really get to see. I ain't watched the whole video. I kind of was doing something in the background and kind of just had it playing. Every now and then you hear some bars. You, you look at this like, who this right here? Hold on. You might have to bring that one back a little bit. And it was a few moments like that. I can't name everybody that was on there right now, but what I can say is this. Salute to DJ K Slay and every artist that's on that. That shit, that shit was amazing. Amazing. It's a masterclass. And it's really just, you know, I feel like you wanna, if you wanna introduce somebody into the genre, into the culture, you sit them down in front of that video right there. 200 MCs, eight bars, you know what I'm saying? Um yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a lot of standouts. A lot of standouts. Shout out to Billboard Baby. You know what I'm saying? I seen she was, you know, she was definitely in his Never Give Up on the album that he released. And um, I feel like she had the standout verse on that track where it was her and a bunch of female MCs. So to kind of see her be able to get on this shit where it's, it's females and males. It's everybody. It's a whole goddamn auditorium of MCs, fam. And it's absolutely amazing. Highly, highly recommend. Um, that's a must watch, fam. Yeah, for any real hip hopper. Um, the fall off is coming though. I feel like we're gonna end it on that right there. The fall off is coming. The fall off is definitely coming. And if you don't know what I'm speaking on when I say the fall off, right? I'm speaking about Jermaine Cole. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I see Jermaine Cole, J. Cole, um, has been outside obviously we you know we see and we've been hearing all of the you know the features that he's been doing this year he sat down with little yachty on the uh safe place podcast which um i wasn't even really familiar with until yesterday um but yeah he sat down with yachty you know dope interview it's about two hours long um and it's kind of just like him basically sitting there reflecting on his music career for the most part. He said some things in the interview that, you know, a lot of things I took away. Um, They definitely mentioned Kendrick a lot. Kendrick's name was definitely, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of Kendrick talk. And he basically was trying to explain where the whole theory of a Kendrick Cole album even came for. And I say all that to say this. I say all that to say this. From what it sounded like, 
I don't think we gonna get no J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar album anytime soon. Uh that's just the reality <laughs> of the situation, fam. I don't think that that's even really a thing anymore at this point. And what I'm really saying is that, yeah, yeah, maybe it's time for me to kind of just accept the reality of the situation now. And the reality of the situation is this. According to J. Cole, you know what his response was, fam? He said, life be lifing. Was life not lifing when Drake hit you, though? Like, I'm just saying, though, like, what are you saying for real? Like, I kind of see what's going on. And I'm just going to say all that to say this. If we don't get that album, it's cool. We appreciate the fact that we got we got to have y'all solo careers at the end of the day. And we still got your albums and we still gonna mix and blend and mash up the verses and shit. And we'll create our own goddamn J. Cole and Kendrick album, fam. Cause realistically, I think my shit better anyway. Facts. Right? I don't think y'all even capable of going in there and creating the album. To the level that I, I make my expectation, my palette, and where I'm at with it right now. You feel me? I just don't know, man. It just seemed like it's at this point. Yeah, man, that window, that window has officially closed, man. And we don't have to look forward to that anymore. I'm looking forward to that fall off album, though. Which should be dropping any day now, considering the fact that we are in the fall, right? Yeah, man. And then also, I'm thinking to myself, damn, this could be a pump fake. He might be pump faking us for the Kendrick, the, the surprise Kendrick verse on the fall off and shit, which I think would be absolutely amazing. I know Kendrick, been he's been rapping somewhere, fam. At the end of the day, he is still a rapper. You feel me? You can't really not rap for that long. Like, he might not be announcing nothing, but I'm pretty sure he's been in and out of studios. You know what I'm saying? I don't really see him on tour right now. He low-key kind of got quiet on niggas. We're not really sure what's going on over there is what I'm saying, right? Oh, new music. Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher, Lil Wayne. Definitely put out a track uh, by the name of Big Dog. It's definitely uh, it's looking like it's the single off of a new project that's getting ready to come out from Benny the Butcher. I'm not really sure what that name, uh, that title is. I did hit the track, though, and I feel like, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayne, Wayne, similar to J. Cole, is definitely another artist who's been on that feature run where it's just kind of like, yeah, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm snatching. And realistically, fam, Wayne kind of already was on this for his whole career. When you look at all of those droughts and basically how he was taking different artists' instrumentals and basically turning them into classic mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, He was doing shit with your instrumental that you couldn't do. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker light that goddamn blunt. Yeah, man. As far as me, episode 46, I think it's a wrap. I think it's a wrap for episode 46. But no need to fear, because episode 47 is almost here. Now, realistically, fam, um, yeah, season three, loading um, once again. Um, 48, my 48th episode, you know, would definitely be the culmination of season two. Of, you know. So, you know, that's just another milestone moment for me. Um, I, 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 Joe Budden, you know, did a interview. He did a sit down recently. It was on, it was on a podcast. It was actually on, uh, you know, Savon's podcast. What's the name of this damn podcast, man? I, I watched the whole thing. And I, I caught some gems in there, man. He was definitely speaking about, you know, the landscaping or the landscape of podcasting and just basically kind of where things are right now as far as if you coming into this, if you coming into this as a novice for the new podcasters, you know, certain things that I feel like he was getting off some shit in there, you know. He definitely made mention of the fact that basically, like, kind of like the window, just like I said, the window might be closed for the Kendrick and J. Cole album. He was speaking on the window for podcasters and podcasting and basically speaking on the fact that if you haven't figured out at this point, if you ain't kind of figure out what direction you're trying to go in, if you kind of, if you kind of really still basically, you know, um, on the fence with things and you're not really sure the time for that is over with basically if you're not really locked in and 
focused on your brand and if you don't really have a, a real blueprint on what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go it's probably pretty much going to be a wrap for you and at this point the window for the podcast shit he's saying is closing low-key i do feel like he's saying that because we've seen him do shit like this before where it's just kind of like we know that he's the type of individual that will say some shit because he just want to get a reaction out of people and he really might be just saying that so that some of you motherfucking podcasters could put in just a little bit more work out there, fam. Myself included. Because low-key, like I said, I had to pocket this episode on y'all. I had to sleep on it, fam. Realistically, fam, you can't sleep on it when you got two episodes to do a week, can you? I can't even fathom doing two a week of these, by the way. Not right now. Um, I, I'm I'm digging it though. I'm liking everything. I like the you know the direction that we're going in. I feel like like I said, the numbers have definitely been my last two episodes. Let me just go ahead and double check that because I ain't really for sure. Uh, episode forty four was my highest viewed episode, and this is not about numbers at the end of the day. So yeah, uh, my last two episodes were my highest viewed episodes. Um, I'm not sure if that has more to do with the fact that I've been just giving y'all that real heat because I really been giving y'all heat. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that's nothing new. You understand what I'm saying? But I do feel like the addition of the different platforms, like me being on iHeart, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, and all of these different platforms now, obviously, that's going to bring some more viewership over, right? And all I'm saying is this, man. The EBCG podcast, you know, um, yeah, this is literally only the beginning. Um, Regardless of what the outcome is, I do feel like I will continue to do this um until i can no longer do it you know i truly do feel like um there's a lot there's a lot here that you can take away from you know being a podcaster or just doing a podcast sitting in front of a microphone and uh basically just you know really just creating dialogue but not just creating dialogue though it's really therapeutic it's really it really is i mean i don't know how many people that can sit in front of a microphone and talk for two hours without a response back from somebody. You know, you understand what I'm saying? It's really not. Everybody doesn't have that, you know, ability to do that. So for you know, me understanding that, I can't take it for granted. You feel me? I feel like I'm on a mission right now. Is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all of this shit that I'm documenting as I'm going back into my episode 33. What I have for y'all, I'm been. I was giving y'all the orcas on episode 33, Killer Whales. Damn, I'm really on episode 46. That's crazy. I remember this episode. We didn't see that long ago. I had nine topics. Shannon Sharp, buys out of the Fox contract. Yeah, it was a lot going on, episode 33. And this is episode 46, and this is a wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, I truly, truly do appreciate you all once again for joining me on this episode of the EBCG. Everybody can't go, but everybody is welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Um, as I get ready to head out, you know, let me go ahead and enjoy the rest of this Sunday, man. I hope everybody, you know, closes out 2023, you know, um, in amazing fashion, man, you know, and hopefully, you know, all is well with everybody mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, um, yeah, man, AMP officially closed the doors. I feel like we already kind of spoke on that. I don't really want to beat on a dead horse here. Um, but yeah, the app has officially been deprecated, according to them. Those are their words, exactly. How you going to use deprecate? I mean, I'm, like I said, man, I just felt like, I don't know, man. It was just certain things that felt like it was kind of, you know what I mean? Everything plays out for a reason, though, man. Episode 46 is a wrap. Everybody can't go podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. I think that's a wrap. You know, episode 46. EBCG podcast. Please remember... That if you woke up today, this morning, anybody within the sound of my voice, just know you are truly, truly blessed. I know, I know sometimes it's not easy to, to kind of see the blessings because sometimes you're so focused on the things that's stressing. But in all reality, 
keep your head up, keep your chin out, and stay in the fight. Because at the end of the day, we going to be all right. We going we gonna to be all right. Episode 46, it came and it went. I appreciate you all for this time, and hopefully it was time well spent. Everybody can't go, EBCG. W-I-L-L-M-A-T-I-C Prayers for humanity Prayers for you and me Until the next time Peace, love, and prosperity One